Today on Power for Life, two things to do when faced with challenges. You have to face your Goliath head on and take him down. That's right now. Somebody show us an answer. We are in need of a savior. We need an awakening, a fresh anointing. Open our eyes again. Show us the power. It's time for you to move to your next level of God's power in your life. Hi, this is Matt Sauger, and you're watching Power for Life. Are you intimidated by some giant in your life? Is there something that's just trying to hold you back? Well, on today's program, you are going to be empowered by God's Word to face your giants head on and take them down because it is time for you to advance forward into your next level of the destiny that God has for you. And before you are going to come into a new level of authority and promotion in your life, guess what? You're going to have to pass through the place that I call the place of contention. Where you have to face your Goliath head on and take him down. And many are at this point of decision right now. In the spirit. Many are at a point of decision. Will they allow their Goliaths to intimidate them? Will they tolerate their Goliaths and forfeit their land and inheritance? Or will they stand up with the heart of David? Will they stand up with the heart of David, a man after God's own heart, and say, who is this? What is this thing that is trying to defy the people of God? It's nothing before God. You see, and David wasn't into just giving Goliath a concussion. You see, David wasn't into just getting a momentary relief from the giant. Let's just knock him out for a few hours and just everyone relax and have some relief from this giant until he wakes up again. It's not about just getting a momentary relief. It's about taking his head off. And David had to pl- had a pass through this place of contention where he was willing to face Goliath head on because this is the reality. This is the reality. We're talking about coming into a place where we obtain a sustainable anointing. You could call it a sustainable mantle, a sustainable anointing. Not just a momentary thing, a sustainable thing. And the reality is this, that which has been tested in your life will have the sustainability factor. What's been tested in your life will have a sustainability factor with it. What's been tested. Oh, now I know you're going to shout me down on this one. Amen. Amen. Testing, praise God. I know you're about to say, count it all joy. You're right. Wow, you're so prophetic. (laughs) First Samuel 17, verse 36. Your servant, this is David. Your servant killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. Each one of us has a private journey with God. You have your own private journey with God. And many may look at your life and see a gifting that operates through you or see an anointing that God gives to you. But they have not seen the private journey of your life where you are out with the sheep with your harp worshiping God and along comes that lion and along comes that bear 
And God has been training your hands for war in the secret place. God has been allowing battles in your life to bring a level of testing in your life. Because that which has been tested is that which God is going to anoint the greatest in your life. So you can really get really, really happy when you feel spiritual pressure coming against you. Or you feel temptation coming against you. Or you feel the adversary coming against you. It's a sign. It's a sign that you are about to be promoted to the next level. Because what God allows to be tested in your life. See, it's the very thing that was tested in David's life. There he was with his sling and stone out in the wilderness. And Saul turns to him and says, David, if you're going to go face Goliath, you're going to have to wear my armor. Here it is. And he puts his armor on David, and David clunks around in it a little bit. And he says, I can't wear this armor. It doesn't fit me. And also, it's not been tested in my life. I can't go into battle with something that hasn't been tested. So he takes off the armor of man, and he takes his sling and stone that's been tested. And God anoints what's been tested in his life. So every time you have had to experience a testing in your life, or maybe some measure of unjust suffering in your life, let's talk about unjust suffering. Unjust suffering is suffering that you don't deserve. It's suffering that you didn't do anything to bring it on you. It is unjust in nature. You can get really happy. Because it will be those very hard, painful places that you walk through in your life that will ultimately carry the deepest anointing and authority. And the reality is this, the devil's going to regret the day he ever tried to mess with you. That's the reality. You see, when I was 14 years old, 12 years old, 13, 14, the devil tried to knock my family out with sickness. My mom got so sick, she was bedridden practically for two years on 24 bottles of medicine a day. And then one night, she finds herself at a Catholic charismatic healing service. But I want you to understand this. The night she went to this healing service, she was the sickest she had been. She was the worst out of the whole two years that night. She was the worst. Because here is the reality. Your greatest warfare will be right before your greatest breakthrough. And a lot of people, they give up and they quit right before the breakthrough. Because it gets the most intense. But when things are most intense around your life... It just means the devil is really, really terrified about the potential that is about to be unleashed in you and through you. See, she dragged her body to that church that night. She collapsed. On, she, she physically collapsed on the floor in the back of the sanctuary. But that night she got radically healed by God. She got radically healed by God. And now... Over the last eight years, we have seen literally thousands of people healed by the power of God. The very thing that the devil used, the very assignment that the devil used to try to take our family out, now is the very thing God has anointed us in. You see, because it's true, your areas of deepest testing and warfare and trial and struggle will become your greatest areas of power, authority, and anointing. And God will turn it all around for your good and put it right back on the devil's head where it belongs. That's what God does. That's his redemptive hand moving in your life. Turning every assignment that the adversary has for you back against him. Hallelujah. So some of you, some of you are about to have the greatest anointing you have ever experienced in your life. Just don't give up. Just don't quit. You see, the principle is endure. The principle is called endurance. It's endurance. Enduring through the place of contention. And 
Soaring through the place of contention. One of the most important questions you will ever ask yourself that you need to know the answer to is are you called or are you chosen? This is a brand new teaching series the Lord just gave me about what it is to be called and what it is to be chosen. What's the difference between these two things? The Bible is very clear. It says many are called, but few are chosen. Now I know that you don't want to just be called by God. You want to be chosen by God. You don't want to just receive a prophetic word. You want to walk in the manifestation of that prophetic word. In this brand new teaching series, you're going to learn some vital things to your journey in God. You're going to learn what's the difference between being called and chosen. You're going to learn how to make that transition. You're also going to learn how to mature into the mantle that God has for you. The Lord has a tailor-made mantle that will fit your life perfectly, that will empower you and endue you to do things that have never been done before on the face of this earth. If you're going to do what God has called you to do, you must have the mantle that He has prepared and made ready for you to wear. And thirdly, you're going to learn how to pass the test of honor and to experience the supernatural promotion that God has for your life. What do I mean by promotion? I mean increased authority, increased glory, increased power, increased anointing, increased everything in God. I'm talking about the super abundant blessed life in God. So I really encourage you today, make sure you pick up this brand new teaching series, Are You Called or Chosen? Don't just be called, be a chosen vessel of the Lord. Order your three CD set today with your love gift of $25 or more. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit us online at mattsorger.com. Hey guys, I want to be able to personally connect with you. How can that happen? I want to hear your thoughts, your prayers, your feedback. Well, online I've got two accounts, my Facebook account and my Twitter account. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Facebook and Twitter these days. Well, just follow the, the information on the screen there. On my Facebook, I've got a personal video blog that is only on Facebook, and I give personal daily updates on Twitter and Facebook that can only be found right there. Hi, I'm Cindy Jacobs at Generals International, and you are watching Power for Life with Matt Sorter. I think of Genesis 26. How many are familiar with Genesis 26? where God was bringing Isaac into his land of inheritance. And when you read this story in Genesis 26, it, it really is something because, I mean, Isaac was brought to a pretty amazing place. Let's turn there. Let's look there because I want to show you something. Genesis 26. God had really blessed Isaac, brought him into his land of inheritance, and when he comes into his land of inheritance in Genesis 26, Okay, he steps into his land and he looks around and it's a barren wasteland. When God brings him into his inheritance, it's a barren wasteland. Have you ever stood in your life and looked around and said, God, is this all there is? Is this my land of inheritance? It's like Ezekiel standing in the valley of dry bones. Like, God, is this it? And th there was Isaac in his land, but it was all dead. So he does something in his land. He begins to sow into his land. As he sows into his land in the same year, in the same year, the Lord favors him with blessing. And I love this in verse 13. The man became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. He owned flocks and herds and a great supply of servants. And the Philistines envied him. So now, how many think that was a pretty good thing that happened in Isaac's life? I mean, God totally transformed his whole land of inheritance. He sowed into it. God blessed it, multiplied it a hundred times. I mean, God made him great and very wealthy. And I mean, how many would like to see that happen in your life? <laughs> to see your whole land be totally transformed right in front of you. So I'd say, God, this is awesome. This is great. But it's not even the end of the story. Because God didn't want to just make Isaac fruitful. He wanted to make him very fruitful. God doesn't want you to just have fruit in your life. He wants you to be very abundantly, massively, overflowingly, more than enough fruitful. 
So now, what happens? A place of contention arises where the Philistines start burying in the wells. And then look here in verse 20. The herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, the water is ours. And he named the well Isaac, meaning contention, because they quarreled with him. And then his servants dug another well, and they quarreled over that one too. And he named it Sitna, which means enmity. So the first well is the well of contention, then it's enmity. And he moved away from there and dug another well. See, he didn't give up. He kept digging. He kept moving. He didn't let discouragement. He didn't let the contention that he was facing discourage him or intimidate him to the place of inactivity. He kept digging. He moved away from there, dug another well. And for that one, they did not quarrel. And he named it Rehoboth, which means room, saying, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. God wants to make the church fruitful in her land of inheritance. But even Isaac in his land, even as God so blessed him, already up to that point, God still had more for him. And in order to increase to the next level of fruitfulness, he had to first pass through the place of contention. But as he refused to give up and he kept going and going and going, eventually God made room for him to be fruitful in the land. Eventually God cleared his adversary out. So that his land of inheritance could be as fruitful as God had ordained it to be. So don't get discouraged when you are facing some contention in your life. Get the ha-ha anointing. Get the ha-ha anointing. Yeah. When you wake up, you know, and you're just having one of those days. You know one of those days. Or you went to sleep great, but you woke up for some reason in a bad mood. You went to sleep great. Something happened unbeknownst to you in the middle of the night. And you woke up and you just didn't quite feel like yourself. You know, sometimes you talk to folks and I don't, I don't know. Sometimes ladies go through this, I've heard it, you know, where they have an ugly day. You know what I'm talking about? Has, has anyone ever had an ugly day where you just wake up and look at yourself in the mirror and you feel ugly? You just look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I feel ugly. It's your giant talking to you. I'm ugly, I'm ugly. I'm ugly. You know, and, and I, I'm just telling you what, what's been said to me, you know. They get, you know, someone can get an ugly day and then they're like, I'm not going to put any makeup on. I'm just going to stay in my sweatpants all day. And, you know, I'm going to go to the, you know, the supermarket and do my food shopping just in my sweatpants and no makeup, nothing. Well, it's... You know, it doesn't matter. If you want to go natural, praise the Lord. That's great. <laughs> That's not the point. <laughs> the point is the ugly feeling that you're having, you know. So you go to the supermarket and you're saying to yourself, I better not see anybody in this supermarket that I know. And you're thinking this to yourself, I better not see anyone today. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to look at anyone. I don't want to have to be nice today. <laughs> And there you are going down the supermarket, and sure enough, there comes your friendly neighbor right around the corner. And you're, you're like, you're ducking. You're like, I don't see you. And you're like, oh, you know, you're going down the other aisle, and you're moving around. And you're just having an ugly day. Well, you don't have to stay under that. Come on now. Sometimes you got to get the ha-ha anointing. And no matter what your emotions feel, the awesome thing about the anointing of God, it flows out of your spirit, not out of your soul. So whether you feel it or not, you're anointed because the Bible says you are. The Bible says if you're a believer, you have an anointing that abides in you. So whether your soul is in touch with it at the moment or not makes no difference to the reality that God's anointing is on the inside of you. So sometimes you just have to grab your soul and say, soul. You're not going to run me around today. Ha, ha, ha. And you need to open up your mouth and say, ha, 
ha, ha. And laugh at the very thing that's trying to push you down. Make the choice, the choice to live out of your spirit, not out of your soul. That's what being spirit-led is all about. It's not just being able to be anointed by God for an altar call. Being a spirit-led believer is for when you wake up on Monday morning and your soul wants to throw the covers back over your head and sleep the whole rest of the day. But your spirit man on the inside with the anointing of God says, get up. We got to heal somebody today. We got to set somebody free today. We got to help somebody today. God has a purpose for my life today. God has an anointing for me today. God has a divine assignment for me today. And you got to, sometimes you just got to talk to your soul. It's okay to talk to yourself. Talk to yourself if you have to. And, you know, release the ha-ha anointing. It's all right. People might think you're a little weird. It's okay. You're called to be a sign and a wonder. You know, you walk in the room and everybody wonders. It's okay. You start moving in the ha-ha anointing, they'll just wonder that much more. But it's learning to live out of your spirit and not out of your soul. Because there are things in your life that will try to keep you out of your inheritance. And look, part of your inheritance, you know, we can really super spiritualize it. But really, when it comes down to it, Monday through Friday, part of your inheritance is just being able to be a happy person. It's just being able to be a pleasant person. Just being able to have, you know, love in your heart and joy in your life and, you know, to be a kind person to other people and to, you know, be able to live your life in a way that really shows Jesus. You know, and not look like you've been walking around sucking on sour lemons for 20 years. It's true. I remember one day years ago, I was a little depressed one day. And an older man of God saw me depressed. And he came up to me and he was all happy. And he said, Matt, it's so good to see that you're maturing in the Lord. It's so good to see you're getting some soberness in your life. And I thought to myself, dude, I'm depressed. <laughs> and I thought to myself, the last time I read the Bible, it said that joy was a fruit of the Holy Spirit, not depression. So really, really the sign of being a mature believer is not how sour you look. It's how happy you are. It's having joy even if everything's going crazy around you. That's the sign of a mature believer. Not, okay, we're in church now. Praise God. Serve Jesus. Just like me. And you can be just as miserable as I am. We're going to run in the opposite direction. In this brand new teaching series, you're going to learn some vital things to your journey in God. So I really encourage you today, make sure you pick up this brand new teaching series, Are You Called or Chosen? Don't just be called, be a chosen vessel of the Lord. Order your three CD set today with your love gift of $25 or more. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit us online at mattsorger.com. July 22nd to the 25th, the Mercy Seat Ministries, Reykjavik, Iceland. July 28th to the 29th, Rehoboth Ministries, XP Web Church, Penrith, Cumbria, England. July 31st, Chiswick Christian Center, Chiswick, London, England. Come experience the glory. I really want you to know today that there is joy in the journey. Yeah, there's some bumps along the road. Yeah, there's some obstacles we have to overcome. But you know what? The power of God is on the inside of us every step of the way. God is empowering you today to face your giants head on, to take down every level of intimidation 
that will try to hold you back from the promised land that God has for you. You know, the enemy tries to intimidate us with a lot of different things. Tries to intimidate us with fear, with rejection, with insecurities. But, you know, I, I just encourage you today, face it all head on. Because when you face it head on, that's when you overcome it. When you're willing to get out of the boat and see those waves in that water in front of you, but you say, you know what, I don't care how high those waves are, I'm stepping out of my boat of limitation, and I'm going to walk on the water with Jesus. You see, when you take that step of faith, when you take that step of going over that, that limitation that's been trying to confine you, get ready. You're breaking out of all those confinements. When you take that step of faith, if your eyes are on Jesus, He's going to walk with you every step of the way. Before you know it, you're going to be walking on water. In other words, you're going to be walking on top of your circumstances, not drowning underneath them. God's not called you to sink. He's called you to walk on water, to walk in His power, and to face every limitation head on. You know, I had to deal with this in my own life. When God was first calling me to ministry, you know what my biggest fear was in Bible school? My biggest fear was public speaking. I remember praying to God and saying, God, I know you want to use my life, but I'm afraid to get up in front of people and talk. I don't want to be up in front of people. I, I shied away from that. I didn't want to be up, you know, in the limelight. I didn't seek that kind of attention. But you know what? I have a name for God. Some people call him Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Je Jehovah Shalom. I call him Jehovah Sneaky because he has a way of sneaking right up in your life and doing something extraordinary that you never thought could happen. So I remember God called me to this place of public speaking, and I had to face my fear head on. The first time I ever preached a sermon or a message at a Wednesday night Bible study at my, my home local church, I couldn't eat for two or three days. And it wasn't because I was fasting. It was because I was terrified of having to public speak. But there, you know, I put my message together. I wrote that thing out word for word, every comma, every period in place. And when I stood up there, I faced my fear head on. My knees were weak. I had to hold on to the pulpit. But as I proclaimed the word that God had put in my heart, you know, that night, my first preaching ever, I just read it word for word. But I'm telling you something, as I faced that fear head on, when I opened up that altar call, the first message I ever preached in my life, I opened up the altar call, the power of God came in, people were dramatically touched by God's presence. You see, when you face your fears head on, you face your limitations head on, God's power moves in and does extraordinary things through you. So I just really encourage you today in this, and I encourage you to advance forward and move into all God has for you. Now I encourage you, get the teaching resource of today, Are You Called or Chosen? Because that's going to really empower you to grow into this anointing that God has for your life. Also, visit me on Facebook and Twitter and go to our website at mattsorger.com. I put out these encouraging words on Twitter every week, so you can sign up for that and get an encouraging word right into your email there. God bless you. We need your power. Change your world. Partner with Matt Sorger Ministries.